and, and, and Prof, I'm going to have you hold on to that point of the food inflation being Kojo at this point, because you see, if the president uh, and, and Prof Bobkin made reference to verifiable data published by the Ghana Health Service, which then uh, disproves or is contrary to the finance minister's position that we, are, we have returned to pre-COVID indicators as per the economic recovery as we're seeing now. And the president saying that because inflation has been trending downwards, price of food items and goods and services have also been reducing. We clearly, what the Ghana Health Service has published for October inflation, food inflation actually rose to about 22.8 percent. So, what is the president looking at in making this particular statement? Okay, so Alfred, um, it would have been helpful in this conversation if we put it in perspective to know what food items we are talking about. See, food is a very general term. So when somebody says food inflation, what food are we talking about? Is it organic, locally produced, imported, agricultural produced? What food are we talking about? Okay, because it's a very big basket when we just use food inflation. Now, let me make this point. When we say that inflation is coming down and is impacting on the lives of Ghanaians, somebody said, oh, no, but prices of food is still rising. Yes, prices of food will always rise. As my brother said, inflation is the rate of increase. Okay, so hold on. If the rate of increase is 54%, it means your prices on the everyday market is increasing at the rate of a higher percentage. If it's 22%, it means that your everyday increase, the rate of increase is lower. So in the long term, if you are getting to point A, 54% will get you a higher price over a period of time than 22% will get you. So today, if let's say the price of Kenke, which Mr. Martin, people have on a table, okay, if it's being affected by inflationary um, pressures, right, and it's 54%, the rate of Kenke will increase much faster than it would have increased if it's 22%. That's that is why it impacts on the life of Ghana. That's not a reduction in the price. No, no, no. But nobody, no, when we talk of inflation, nobody talks about the reduction in prices. No, that's what the president said. Well, that's the, what I'm, I'm, brother, we're having a technical conversation here. Let's stick to that. No, I'm, what I'm, I'm I am, making I am, reference I am, I am telling you. The statement the president boss, is not here. We are, the president is not here. We, I, I am, hold on, I am a professional. You brought the financial analyst here. If I'm wrong, he can correct me. I'm telling you what it is. Let's forget what the president said. No, we can't forget. Oh, my brother, do I don't speak for the. I don't speak for the president. Like you asked me. My, did you bring me no, 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 here no, no. to speak Come. for? You asked me a question, not what the president said. I'm speaking. I mean, I'm giving I mean you. Reference to what well, the president I don't said. speak for the president, my brother. So stop it's asking me what the president said. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that when we talk about inflation, I'm trying to. We are trying to educate our listeners. We are not doing politics all the time. What we need to seek to do is educate. What Ghanaians should understand is that when we say that there is a reduction in inflation, the reduction in inflation, what it goes to presuppose is that the rate of increase of prices has decelerated. That's what it is. So when somebody comes and says that we are at a pre-COVID um, point, what he's trying to say is that we are decelerating. Because we went from a very low of 7% to a very, because inflation is, is on a downward trend. If you look at the data from the last two years, inflation is decreasing. It has, it's not increasing. Because we are at 54, we are now at 22. It was even projected to be end of year 18, but I think some shocks have come in and it's not there. So what I'm trying to explain, and let's really stop doing this thing, what the president said, what the president said. No, no, but I mean, you can't discount that. that um, but saying. that's not what we are discussing, though, are we? No, what we are discussing I, is that what are the effect on the average Ghanaian when inflation comes down? That is the, what I'm explaining to and Ghanaians. Exactly now, now and, I, and I went on to say that, and I went on to down. say that, based on the, um, um, the, the, the presentation that my brother did on imported and manufactured, we have a very peculiar problem in Ghana. I'll give you some companies that manufacture locally, import a lot of raw materials. Okay, mm -hmm. so though they are, manufacture, they are manufacturing locally, because they are also importing raw materials, it will also make local, the, the feeding cost of their manufacturing has a high factor of import. So it will now contribute to when you have import um, prices going up. One of the things that has happened, and he made a point about 
extensive recovery. The world economy has not recovered post-COVID because a year after COVID, Russia invaded Ukraine. As we speak today, the whole world economy is affected by the Russian-Ukraine war. Oh. Every, everywhere you go, please, you might disapprove it. Mm. The data is there to show that every economy in the world, you go to the U.S. election, the number one issue was economy, mm -hmm. affected by the Russia-Ukraine war. U UK, the conservative lost badly to labor, and it was based on the economy. Today, when the labor came into power, what have they seek to do? They said all the nice things to the UK people. They came into power. The first budget the Labour government has read, go and see the fight and the this grant in the UK because, look, the economy in the UK is so bad, affected by the world economy of U the disruptions in value chain, food supply, and all the things that you can think of caused by the Russia-Ukraine war, which is still ongoing because these economies are not stable. Ghana doesn't live on an island. We are part of the global situation. So these factors affect us. So admittedly, well, but, we but, are in, hold on, admittedly, we are in difficult times. But what Ghanaians need to know is that even in the difficult times that we are in, has the MPP government performed better than the NDC? And the question is 100%. We have outperformed the NDC in every sector of the economy. And Dr. Baumia has been out there challenging the NDC to come out. But and they refuse to do that. In every sector of the economy, we've outperformed it. In growth, sorry, in growth, in, econ in, in jobs, in road, in every sector. But the, with the difficulties that we're faced with, is it just about the impact of Russia, Ukraine, and COVID-19? Yes, because and, and because, because you see, I have, right no, but let me, let me give you no. my, my personal reservations on this matter. And I have said on this platform multiple times, when the government came in, Nanado Danko government came in in 2017, I sat on TV3 and said that what we should have preached was austerity, if you remember, mm -hmm. right? And we didn't preach austerity. Became, yes. My brother, you see, what people don't seem to realize was that every time me and you have interviewed, I was a cardbearer member of the MPP. I, I speak the truth. I don't lie about certain things. So every so time me and you had, mm -hmm. any time me and you had these interviews, and I was giving you these facts, I still held true to them, right? When we came in in 2017, what the Donaldo led government should have done was to preach austerity. Mm -hmm. Not to basically go on the length of, we were in IMF at that time, and the minute we came out of IMF, we went back on the bond market and started borrowing on a borrowing spree. That was wrong. Because that's one of the vulnerabilities. Well, that, that, the, that, that's the, the, because the we have not... Because, exactly, because we did not... You see, what government needs to build is a resilient economy. When you have a resilient economy, it's now been able to withstand shocks around the world. Which you Unless to do. We, yes, exactly. And that is, that is a flaw. And I have said it multiple times that one of the things that this government failed to do was that. We did not build a resilient economy and went back on the world market. Okay. We didn't know COVID was going to come in 2019. Because bear in mind, the year we had COVID, we had gone into the market on, on February and borrowed heavily. Yeah. Okay? So we didn't foresee. We thought the economy is doing so well. And the economists will teach you that you can borrow yourself out of debt. I don't believe in that. Okay, some economists believe that you can borrow, you can borrow, your, you can you can borrow yourself out of debt. Whether true or false, I'm sure my brother has explanation for that. But it is thought that you can borrow yourself out of debt. You borrow more, your economy expands, and based on the expansion of your GDP, blah blah blah, cool minini. I could okay. don't believe in that. What we should have done as a nation was to be very restrained because the economy was bad. The economy we inherited from the NDC in 2016 was bad. We had just come out of the IMF. We shall restrain ourselves, build a resilient economy. We did not. We went out on the world market, borrowed heavily. The rest is history. Today, oh. when we are looking forward and com uh, the COVID has happened, the Russia-Ukraine war has come in and it's still ongoing. What everybody who is watching us today should know that we have a set of problems on our hand as beautifully elaborated by the professor. Who has the best solution to take this country forward? Is it NDC or MPP? And for me, that's the most important conversation going towards okay. December 11. It's the NDC, that then John Mahama, the best person to lead this country with the problems, the myriad of problems that we face, or Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is the best person. And with the performance that we've seen on paper, and with the proposals that has been put out there, 
Dr. Baumia putting out 33 proposals at against John Ramani Mahama Zero, putting up 77 policies to rescue this country going forward. Everybody watching us today will admit that in December election, the person best to take Ghana out of this situation is Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. It's exactly 10 o'clock at the time we say in the studio. And in fact, uh, Professor Bokin, I, I made reference to something that you were not into, and I'm going to come to some media um, because we've heard a number of times that the, the current economic situation we find ourselves in is a combined effect of the COVID and Russia-Ukraine war. The verdict, at least per the IMF's own report, yeah, does not support that because I recall the IMF talked about pre-existing vulnerabilities that contributed to the Ghana's economic crisis in 2022 up until now. Debt, public debt increasing dramatically between 2019 and 2022 was first liquidity pressures, borrowing costs, external shocks as well. Look, it cannot be the case that it's yes. just about this Russia and Ukraine, is it not? Alfred, in 2019, the Ministry of Finance had conducted their own internal debt sustainability analysis mm -hmm. and flagged that we had breached the policy dependency thresholds. Mm -hmm. So we exited the IMF supported program, and I agree with him, there were still vulnerabilities. There were issues, but I think we ignored them. Okay. And went on our way spending as though we had those fundamentals. But you see, um, let me also chip in this. If you borrow and you invest the proceeds in enhancing the cash flow generation capacity of the economy, debt will not be a problem. Mm. So in finance, we say that it's good to borrow, but if you are in a profitable situation, so when crisis come, and crisis will come, exactly. this will not be the last time. In yeah. fact, you know, sometimes in economics, we say that um, crisis, it's not, it's not me. Yeah, yes. crisis have a way of separating propaganda from reality. Crisis have a way of separating the propaganda from reality. Yes, because it exposes you. Okay. It, it shows you the resilience of your economy and all of that. So your ability to withstand those shocks will depend on the resilience of the economy you have built. And that is why COVID came. It, it affected every country. But some countries were affected much more exactly. than others. And those, those who were not prepared. Yeah, those who were affected much ah. more than others had a weak resilience yeah. of the economy. And, and fa, fa, look, if you look at Ghana, because the, the global supply right. chain was intact and all of that, uh, uh, we, we, we sustained planting for food and jobs with propaganda. Mm -hmm. Because we were importing onion from Niger, Burkina mm. Faso, and all of that. But then COVID came, almost all those lines dried to some extent. Food inflation started skyrocketing. 